Hi, my name is Howard. I'm here at Rio Communities in New Mexico at the River Edge Tiny Home Village, and this is my tiny house. The big house is good for big families, but to me it didn't appeal to me. I wanted something smaller, something less energy intensive, less maintenance. It gives you more time, more freedom. So there was a lot of factors in there. It just like made sense. It didn't make sense to a lot of people, you know, when you tell people about a tiny house, they just like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not a weird thing at all. <laughs> I'm 62 years old, grew up mostly in Danbury, Connecticut. Well, I did mostly engineering technician work at certain corporations, but I also taught myself how to do web developing because I wanted to make my own website. And that started in 1998. As soon as Google became a search engine, I realized yeah, I got to do something on the internet. So I taught myself that. I also taught myself photography so I can put better pictures on the internet. You know, so I taught myself a lot of things. Well, my father, he was a very healthy guy, but for some reason he started having lung trouble. And then he got divorced. At that time, I had no roommate. And uh, so I said, sure, I'll take care of my dad. He wasn't so bad, you know, when he first moved in, but it gradually got worse. And then that day, he didn't get out of bed. And so I had a nurse come to the house, and uh, that was it. He uh, passed away right in front of me. And I was like, wow, still not, you know, prepared for that. You know, your parents leaving you, it's like, it's tough. A month after that, I decided I'm going to sell the condo and get this tiny house thing going. Because, um, and that was a good time to sell my condo because uh, the market was a little better. A lot of people from the pandemic were coming into Connecticut from New York. So I said, this is the perfect time. And people were saying, where are you going to go? Where are you going to live? I go, doesn't matter. I got to sell this thing and then I'm going to go build my tiny house. I'll figure it out. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of like jumped the gun. I probably could have planned a little bit better, but uh, I just needed to get rid of it. I've been living in my tiny house now for about 10 months. My tiny house is 30 feet long, eight feet wide, and about 13 feet high. We're parked here at the River Edge Tiny Home Village community, and it's a good spot, lots of room. Well, I decided to decorate the house with some tiny house sayings and some artwork, just to spruce it up a little bit. I found a local artist here in Belen and got it done. On the outside, I got a, a nice little workout station with some dumbbells, pull-up bar, and I can do some exercises because when you're 62, you got to keep fit. I got a little storage here, got some trees, little seating area. And in the back, I got a little raised bed garden where I can grow my own vegetables, which is pretty hard here in New Mexico. But I'm learning. I'm getting there. I'm becoming a farmer. <laughs> So let's go take a look in the inside of my tiny house. Welcome to my tiny house. The name of my tiny house is Advanced Basics because I wanted the basics of a tiny house, but more advanced using smart home features. Near the front door, I wanted a place for my shoes and jackets and hats and stuff, plus the weather station and any kind of control system that I needed for the smart home features. This little tablet here will be for solar power or any kind of smart home features I want to control from here. Well, I wanted my own weather station just to verify the temperature inside and out and different locations of the tiny house, like what's happening underneath the tiny house, just to maintain that. I also have an infrared thermometer and I can check the floor and, you know, certain spots where temperatures might vary just to see if there's anything I can do to mitigate any kind of heat loss or stuff like that. I also put some more hooks here so I can put my hat up when I come in and find my sunglasses and my keys and stuff. Just basic stuff. In the front of the house, we have a full-size bathroom. It's plumb for both a regular toilet and a composting toilet. I have a full-size shower, which is easy to clean. I have a washer-dryer combo. The combo saves a lot of space. You don't have a washer and a dryer. And the only thing to set back, it's small. You can't do blankets and stuff like that. So you'll have to go to a laundromat. And when the spin cycle is on, your house is rocking. <laughs> 
and I have a nice sink and just open stuff so I can put some towels in there. This is the temperature of my hot water heater on demand. So I had a separate compost toilet in here and here's the vent hole back here. When I decided to come to New Mexico, they said they had sewer hookups, so I figured I'd just put a regular toilet in and hold on to the composting toilet to be used somewhere else where they don't have sewer. Instead of putting a regular door in, we went for a pocket door, uh, which is easy to save space. When designing the bathroom, I definitely went for a higher ceiling in the bathroom. I didn't want to feel constricted or too close. Some tiny houses, your head is like touching the ceiling. So I went a little higher. I didn't mind taking away some space from the loft because I was using it mostly for storage. So uh, that worked out perfect. It's roomy. I can store plenty of stuff out there. At one point when I was doing a venture travel and, and stuff like that, I was going to get a motor home and tow a vehicle. I thought that'd be cool that I can travel and do photography and web development. You know, I can do all kinds of stuff and just show people great adventures. And I even started a website. And then I just said, you know what? I like the tiny house. I like the, the fact that you can pull a tiny house and it's a full house and you can design it yourself. After watching videos for two years and doing a lot of reading, you think you're ready and uh, the day comes to planning your tiny house and you are in for a surprise. It's like, oh my God, I got to think of this. I got to think of that. Oh my God. And then when you go into building it is another big surprise. Oh my God, I didn't think of this. I didn't think of that. Deciding to build the tiny house and then looking for a contractor to build it was uh, a long process. I found this person in Tennessee and uh, he was very good at explaining things to me, the, the process. And I said, this is the guy I'm going with, you know, and uh, and then I find out he subcontracted out to another firm in Austin, Texas. So as soon as I found out, I was like, I might as well just go down there and just meet this contractor, make sure everything is going well. I'm glad I did. I made a lot of changes. They didn't like me there, obviously. I mean, they made it quite clear. But, you know, I told them I'm nearby. I'm going to be traveling around here. I'm going to be stopping in periodically. I got to know the guys, and uh, they were good people and everything. It's just the low quality and the BSing that wasn't necessary. It doesn't make any sense to me, but um, yeah, it is what it is. You hear contractor nightmare stories all the time. So I was like, man, I'm living one of those. <laughs> it's not that bad, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we're in the kitchen now, and we got a nice cabinet for all kinds of tools and stuff that you need. And this cabinet is also great for a ladder and some tools. And I can use this ladder to get up in the loft, put stuff up there. Next here is our refrigerator, almost, you know, full size. It's like an apartment size fridge, 39 cubic feet. So, but it has plenty of room. I definitely have plenty of room for food and storing food in the freezer. That's a good fridge. Across from the refrigerator and the stove here is my desk. It's a standing desk. I bought this desk in Texas. Uplift desk is in Austin, Texas. It's a great desk. It adjusts even lower, but it also goes up standing height. So I don't have to sit all the time in front of the computer. I like to work at the picture window because the light coming in is good, except when the sun is right in your eyes. I like being able to see outside, especially the bird feeder and stuff. I like to see, you know, the trees, just seeing outside and not just looking at the screen. Good to see the outside and remind me to like, you know, maybe I should stop working once in a while <laughs> and get outside because <laughs> I'm going to die. That's why I got the standing desk because, you know, sitting too long is not good for you. Other side of the desk, I have a multi-purpose little oven here for any kind of baking and stuff. I didn't want a full-size oven because I hardly ever use an oven, but I did want something to, you know, make maybe a small pizza or heat up some food and stuff. I also have a full microwave and it has a vent that vents to the outside because I do have a gas stove to burner, and, but I also have an induction cooktop, which is very efficient, heats up stuff really quick, except you gotta be careful. You don't wanna leave stuff on there because <laughs> that stuff will heat up and, and ruin whatever pot or pan you have on there. I wanted the option between gas and, and electric just to have that option, but I've used all burners at once and it works great. I have plenty of cabinet space here in, in the kitchen. 
I mean, so much space. So I still have to uh, fill it up, actually. I got a lot of stuff to put in here. I got a full sink, which is great. I can put a cutting board in here, cut food up. I can load it up with dishes <laughs> if I wanted to. So beyond the countertop of the kitchen, I was gonna utilize this space for a small wood stove and I decided not to. I figured I could add some electronic stuff, power backup, my Wi-Fi printer. I'm gonna probably put some stereo equipment here. I'm glad I did that, just have a little more space because the wood stove would just be now and then. It wouldn't be used all the time. But I'm glad I, I have extra space. And uh, the whole tiny house thing is utilizing the space you have and not try to add too many things, especially things that you're not going to utilize as much. Back here is my adjustable bed. I can turn it into a couch where I can watch my full screen TV, which is also a sound system. And I can also move the TV and view from my desk and also remove the speakers and put them on the other side of the tiny house so I can have like a full stereo. I can also move the speakers and put them behind my head when watching a movie so I can have that surround sound effect and a subwoofer over in the corner. So when that thing is going at the whole house vibration, it just loves the bass, you know what I mean? You can't get enough bass. It's a great feeling. I mean, uh, to have the, the sound bounce off the walls and fill the space, you know what I mean? It's awesome. Initially, I wanted a Murphy bed and a couch combo. I thought, you know, lift up the bed, have a couch, and then you can watch the TV from the couch. Trying to attempt to put a Murphy bed, I realized that wasn't gonna work. I did look at adjustable beds. That would be perfect because you can have the adjustable bed turn into a couch and you can adjust it any way you want, so it's never the same. You can make the head go up, you can make your feet go up. So you have all these adjustments. Plus, you know, I'm 62, and you know, eventually, you know, I'll be spending a lot of time in bed, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but it's gonna be, uh, it's, it's just a great tool. And if you're using it as a couch and you're watching TV and you're ready to go to bed, your bed's not cold because you've been sitting in it for a couple of hours, which has always been a problem, you know, in the condo. Every time I watch TV in the living room and come to the bed, it's freaking cold in there. And of course, you know, I was trying to save on, you know, the heating bill and uh, here I don't have to worry about that. So the adjustable bed wasn't the height exactly where I wanted it. So I put some little lifters on there. Then it, it just offers a good space to put stuff underneath there. I do have cabinets over here, more storage. Of course, I like plants. They filter the air, makes you feel good. I did see a tiny house have a fireplace kind of like heater thing, but I wasn't sure if I wanted one. But I found one that fit perfect on this ledge because, you know, here's the... Uh, the well for the wheels. It's a triple axle a trailer. So I figured, oh, this is perfect size for that. So this also is a, a smart home feature where it can go on and off anytime you want it. I like to have it go on when I'm ready to get up, like maybe 15 minutes. I also have the lights come on automatically so I don't have to turn them on. So it's like uh, when I get up at five in the morning, the lights automatically come on. And then the uh, the intensity of the lights increase, especially when I look at the computer monitor, so, because I don't want any eye strain. This can just be a regular fireplace. It kind of, you know, it's fake and everything, but it acts as a good heater. At the end, I ended up, it costing me $135,000, which was a lot. But I did it because I believe these guys can do a high quality job. I kept those guys working. You keep a place in business during a pandemic, you feel you're a part of that, you're helping these people out. That was the main thing. And the fact that I've already got to know these guys, so I was feeling comfortable with them, but even though you're comfortable with somebody, it doesn't guarantee that you're gonna have a perfect quality build. That's the thing, when your house is being built, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you can be there, I mean, I highly recommend it. Just to go there and just to see what's going on. My biggest advice I would give someone looking to build a tiny house is do your homework, watch as many videos as you can, and talk to people. Talk to people who have actually done it, because those are the people who are gonna enlighten you the most. 
I watched hundreds of videos and read a lot of articles on websites and still was not prepared. You have to do your homework and you have to find a good contractor, one that you can trust. And that's another long process, but it's worth it finding the right person. I would definitely look at that contract and understand that contract. If you can find an attorney who can look it over for you, that's great. But I didn't. I just looked at it myself and just crossed my fingers and hoped that this guy's legit and we're not going to have any problems or misunderstandings. So, yeah, definitely you want to look at that contract and, and fully understand it, even though you're still going to miss things. The tiny house is an awesome thing. and. Uh, quite happy with the way the tiny house came out, the way I feel when I'm in here, the fact that I'm able to play music and have a heavy bass without pissing off the neighbors. I couldn't do that in a condo. You have a neighbors upstairs, downstairs to the side. You can't live with music or watch movies on a high volume without disturbing your neighbors. This, I can play it loud and I can be outside. I can tell I'm not really like affecting anybody and then come back in here and say, wow, this, this is how it's incredible. And I have enough space here to work out. So I left this space, even though I was thinking about putting something here, but I'm glad I have enough space. So I had my neighbor over here. We were both dancing in here, playing music and dancing. I said, see, you can dance in a tiny house. <laughs> you know, I was like, see, this thing's working. <laughs>